Hello, I'm David Smuha, and today we're going to have a look at Adobe's Illustrator program. Just a brief look, we're not going to go into detail. And our reason for doing this is we're going to have a look at how to do a logo or uh, some 3D text uh, on a path in Adobe's Illustrator. We are going to start by opening up Illustrator, and we're going to come over here, click on File, New, and let's just call it um, Video Logo. Video logo. There we are. Now, you'll see I've got it set to width 1280 by height 720. And remember, that has been the dimensions that we have used all along for uh, our video HD 720p. Um, have a check. It's in, you've got a choice of CMYK, which is for printing, in your color mode, or RGB, which is for screen. And this is going to be screen. And we want 72 pixels per inch. And let's go OK to that. Now, Illustrator loves to open and take up the whole screen, which means you're working bigger than what you are quite often. So if you want, come and choose the 100%. And there we see the uh, the actual size of the artboard, as it's called in Illustrator. Now, the first thing we're going to do here is we're going to have a look at the tools here. We've got the selection tool as the top one in the toolbar there. We've got the direct selection tool. That selects smaller parts or individual parts of your composition. You've got the magic wand tools, the same as what you've got in uh, Photoshop. Then you've got the lasso tool, same as Photoshop, the pen tool, so same as Photoshop, the type tool, different to Photoshop. This type tool, click on it there, hold it down, and you'll see it's got a type tool, an area type tool, a type on path tool, a vertical type tool, a vertical area type tool, and a vertical type on path tool. So the tool that we're going to use today is going to be the type on path tool. Yes, we're going to type on a path. Now, the next uh, tool is lines, spirals, rectangular grids. We don't want that. This is what we're going to use next. It's the um, shape tool, I call it. And you've got a rectangle tool, a rounded rectangle tool, and an ellipse tool. We're going to use the ellipse tool today. So click on the ellipse tool. And with that, you just click on the screen and drag out. And if you drag downwards, you get a deeper ellipse. If you drag acrosswards, you get a shallower, longer ellipse. So there's our ellipse. Just let it go. You, now, if you want to work with an ellipse, fit all well and good. We can work with an ellipse. But I'm going to delete that ellipse, and I'm going to show you how to work on a circle. And so we've still got the ellipse tool. I want you to, before you start to drag and pull with your mouse, click on the shift key, hold the shift key down, then drag and pull with your mouse, and you're going to get a perfect circle. And now, to move the circle, you don't try and move it with the ellipse key because every time you do it you're going to get another ellipse so you need to come over and get the selection tool select it and drag it up a little bit what we're going to do next is we're going to come over here and grab our type on path tool well, let's click it here to activate what type we're going to get you see we've come up with Myriad Pro just like in Photoshop you click activate the type tool and you get the type um, inter interface here so you can choose different styles of text. Let's go for one that um, most people are going to have. Let's do Arial Black today. Yeah, Arial Black. There we go. And let's come up to 72 points so that we can... We've got something nice and big to work with. Now, this could be video, or we could put my video logo. And then space... David Smuha. Now, your name's not David Smuha, so don't go using it. Put my video logo in your name. See how it's out of uh, kilter. We've got, it starts up here at the 10 o'clock and finishes down here almost at 6 o'clock. We want to get that so that it's even. There's a tool for doing that. You come over here and click on this rotate tool. Click on, it's just underneath the eraser tool, get the rotate tool. Come over here and click on where you want to rotate. Rotate it round. And let's see if we can't get these even. We want to match the uh, bottom and the top spacing. It's almost even. I think it needs to go back a little bit in the clockwise direction. Not much. 
Look, I think that's good enough for what we're going to do. Now come back over here, change tools again, or otherwise every time you click that screen, you're going to get it moving a, uh, in a rotation. Click the direct selection tool. Now, we're, we're selecting the text, by just by doing this, we're selecting the text. And as you'll see over here, in the type tool, you've got a black, which is the body of the type, and we've got black body of type. And then you've got the stroke, and the stroke has got a stroke through it. So that means that there's no stroke. Let's change that, and let's put a yellow, or blue. you put whatever color you like. I'm putting a yellow, just so that you can see it, because it's bright. Or blue might even work better, or that lilac -ly blue color. Anyway, something that you can see. We want to come up with something you can see. So choose a color that you can see. And then increase the thickness of your stroke. Over here you've got stroke thickness. See how it's growing? Now I've got my stroke thickness on three pixels. Now that we've got that type in place, what I wanted to show you is how you apply a pattern to the fill, or the, you know, the, the bulk of the lettering. Let's grab our text tool again, and let's highlight the text. And whilst the text is highlighted, go and click on the body here. Now in my presets, I've got loaded some of my patterns. There's a daisy color, and I'm going to go to that daisy color, and look at that, the daisy color has taken, even though you're seeing it in negative there. And um, whilst I'm highlighted, I should actually put an edge on that. I want to put the uh, yellow edge that I wanted earlier. And I'd like that to be two pixels. So I just click here and then I click up one more pixel. And there we have it. When you click on this up here in the color picker, down if you come down to the bottom left hand corner of it and click on that, you get a swatch library. So come down in your swatch library, come down to patterns nature, and then nature foliage. And we've got different things that we can do. I mean, we know from what we've discussed before that you can put a drop shadow around that to push it out. A drop shadow on it now will only make it more difficult for the program to render. <clears throat> so we're not going to do a drop shadow just yet. We're going to go up here into effects. If you come down to the first 3D effect, you'll see it's got extrude and bevel. Let's click on that first one. Let's just take that over out of the way so that we can see. Now here on the extrude and bevel, you can see it's got a, a standard setting of um, minus 18, minus 26, and 8 degrees in rotation. Click on preview, and it will generate a preview for it of what it's going to look like. And then we have the preview. I don't know if that's what you're expecting. But you can see that's quite a sophisticated piece of rendering that it's had to do, given uh, all the different angles that it's had to get in, because the text has turned round back on itself. It's the same that it's looking at from the top, some from the side, and some from underneath. So it's um, pretty complex. And uh, I'm going to click OK to that. Now what I've gone and done here is I've made it the text a lot shorter, so it's quicker to render. So why don't you make the adjustments to your text, and we'll make it quicker to render by doing that. And then we'll continue. Video logo. I'm just going to leave it like that. And I'm going to come here. I'm going to uh, type on another path. This is going to be a straight line. We're just going to draw a straight line. Let's make it so that it finishes in the circle so that it can be part of this logo. And then I'm going to come back and get my type on a path tool and bring it bring it to the um, about a 48 I think should fit it all and I'm going to grab that using the direct selection tool and take it up to there and I want to do the same do I want to do the same I'm not sure let's just for the argument's sake let's go a little bit um, uh, over the edge. Let's put another pattern in here just to show you how easy it is to put another pattern in. So I'm coming over here and I'm going to grab that stripe. Why didn't my... well my stripe is taking according to this and um, I'm going to 
put one of those colors from the stripe looked like it had sort of like some ochre ochre colors in it so I'm going to put an ochre edge around it and I'm going to make that two pixels in diameter and I'm going to deselect the text and get the direct selection tool selecting this I'm going to come into the effect again 3d extrude and bevel and I'm going to make it not quite as deep because the text is smaller so proportionately I'm going to make that 30 pixels deep and I'm going to ask for a preview there we have the preview already and you may say well I think it would have looked better on um, go okay to that on a circular thing but I'm just showing you what you can do and see with the illustrator you can take it and uh, um, because it's straight it's not finding it too much of a problem to re-render but what I want to do is I want to rotate it It's looking a little bit more like it might belong in there. Now I'm going to grab it and push my name up closer. And then you can always um, grab a shape. And I'm actually going to come in with an ellipse. Put that ellipse. Oh, there we go. That's what I wanted. But I want to put the ellipse, the ellipse below everything. So I'm going to open up my layers, bring it over here, and that's brought my artboard to layers, and I'm going to stretch the layers out a bit. I'm going to grab this top layer and bring it so that it's at the bottom. Now, remember what I said before about putting a drop shadow? So let's grab the video logo and go for an effect. Stylize is where the effects are here, so you come along the effects menu, come down to stylize, hit drop shadow and let's ask for a preview and it's done a drop shadow on the shape hmm not what I was wanting but um, let's go okay to that and let's use the direct selection tool uh, okay let's use the direct selection tool and go effect stylize drop shadow this should put it on the uh, video logo text There we are. Brings it off nicely. Now it looks like you could drop down the David Smooha for your name. Oh, excuse me, we'll go okay to that. Like I said, with the direct selection tool still, drag it down a tiny bit and over a tiny bit, I think. Yep. Now let's, whilst that's selected, come to effect, stylize, and we'll do a drop shadow again. I'm not going to worry with the preview, I'm just going to go for it. There we are, nice and quick. All right, now, getting a feel for just some of the things that you can do in Illustrator. It's a very powerful program, and we've just touched on some of its basics today. I'm David Smuha, and I'll be back with more. Thank you.